Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here, welcome to the channel and welcome back to Perdition's Mouth Abyssal Rift where we're still doing Scenario 3B, Pet Laboratory. Now just before we start Episode 9, just a couple of things to go through from last turn. Last turn I had knocked my little reminder token off the rest spoke, <laughs> which meant that I actually tried to do the same trick again where I had Simmer trying to aid Alathabal right at the end when uh, Alathabal was being attacked. So Simmer couldn't aid Alathabal. So Simmer will get these two cards back. And Alathabal unfortunately did take a hit. So she goes down to three hit points and she will also take a wound card. So we'll put that on top of her deck. She now got two wound cards, which is bad news. So we'll put those back up there. What else was there? Now, I did put a fatigue. I've put it over here, so I know it's... Uh, I've put it over here next to a sort of um, token that she moves around the Stone of Destiny, just to remind me. But, unlike... I'm not sure whether she gets it now or whether she gets it when she discards the card. Because on all other cards, let's have a look at a wound card, Severed Archery. It says gain of fatigue. But on every other wound card, you only get what is on written on here when you discard it. So if you have, say, a minus four. Here's one we discarded earlier. Like Gaping Wound. The minus four doesn't kick in till you actually spend it. We haven't spent this yet. We haven't discarded it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that on there. She's back up to four action points because I don't think that kicks in until we actually discard the card. So I'll put that over here. It didn't matter last turn because she only moved three spaces on the Stone of Destiny anyway, not four. So that was fine. But I'll take that back for the time being, unless somebody comes up and says, well, no, the fatigue goes on straight away. But I think if it's like any of the other wound cards, it doesn't actually kick in until you actually discard it. So we'll just leave it there, waiting in the wings. Was there anything else? No, it was just... Other things last turn were just my stupidity. Oh, Paul, Paul Asito did mention about actually um, Simmer using his Banish ability. Now, the reason I didn't do it is because Bastion was in the way. Yes. Now, it doesn't actually say anything about heroes being in the way. I just naturally assume that if a hero was in the way, Banish wouldn't work. But it may be that it would work. If it would work, then... Would work. <laughs> if it would have worked, then I, I, that was something else I missed. Because obviously it could have Banished. Banished it into the wall. It would have got an extra hit point damage and it would have been killed. But, again, I didn't catch that one either. But I'm not so sure whether you can Banish enemies through other heroes so that's uh we'll leave that one as is okay so that's the end of the chatting for episode eight let's get into episode nine and the hero phase and here we are at the hero phase our first player is going to be a lathabal and Alathabal is going to use two of her four action points. She's still got four action points. And she's going to use two of them to move on to the special tab. Let's spin everybody around, shall we? So she's moved on to the special tab. And she's still got two action points left, which she can use for one movement. She is also going to use pullback. So she's going to use pullback. You may immediately move up to three action use three action points of movement, but at no cost. This is important because we're going to go one, two, three. We were in a threatened square, but it does say here at no cost. So I'm reading that 
that we don't have to pay the extra action point for being for moving out of a threatened square. Then one hero within two range and line of sight of you regains one hit point. That is going to be a Lathabal, so she goes back up to four. She still keeps the wound card that she got, but she is able to do that. And also, because she's on the special tab, she can also use healing apparatus. And she's going to use that again on herself, and she's going to go right up to full health again. So she's back on five hit points. We will discard pullback. And that is it for a Lathabal. We want to get her out of the way because we want to attack with Bastion. So that is it for her. Who is going to go next? And next up is going to be Bastion. Here's Bastion on the attack tab. He's actually going to charge. So one, two, three. He spends three action points to move. He's still got three left, remember, so he's going to use those three that's left to go one, two, three. He's going to get right in front of Simmer here, and he is going to attack our friend the Summoner. Now, he hasn't got any cards of his own, but Simmer does have a couple of cards that he can help you out with, because he was not able to use them to aid a Lathabal last turn. So let's check... What his combat is, the combat of Bastion is currently 4 against the defence of 3, so it's 4-3. We are desperate to get some, <laughs> we are absolutely desperate to get some hits on this particular summoner. So we're going to play Master of Faith, Simmer is going to play it to aid, so that is 8 versus 3. The only thing that can save this guy again is a plus five, but we have one true command. So we get a plus two. Ah, so we have got a hit. We will discard Master of Faith. And we will get a wound. Which we are going to put on the summoner. So this is more like it. Once we've got some cards to help Bastion out, it gets a lot easier. Plus, if we don't have the summoner whizzing about everywhere. Just to point out that Elisa isn't in line of sight. Remember, this here is an out of bounds square. So that would be one corner, two corners. You cannot get line of sight across two corners. So Elisa is fine. We've done the attack for Bastion. We'll spin him around. So all that leaves is Elisa. Let's get across to Elisa. And here we are back again with Elisa. What is Elisa going to do? Well, let's have a look at the Stone of Destiny. So she is going to attack. So that is one. Skip. Onto here. So she's got... That was two. So she's got two action points left. Remember, I'm not using the fatigue until we actually get rid of that card and discard it. So we're on attack. Because we've got two left, we can use one for one combat point. We get another card. Helping hand for two. And she's now going to attack. So she's got one attack anyway she's got four with elvish dagger and that is four versus one i'm not going to play helping hand we're going to have four versus one and remembering that we've got one true command excuse my voice got a bit of a bit of a frog in my throat right so four versus one and we still have one true command so it needs a plus three or better. Gets a plus four. We're going to play one true command. Here we are. So, well, better show it you. Play after drawing a response card to benefit an enemy. Discard that response card and draw a different response card. And then we've got to remove this card from the deck for the rest of the level. So we'll put it over here with teleportation. And we will pull another card. 
what do we get this time? Plus one. <laughs> so, Elvish dagger worked. That goes back into her hand. And we kill our final bone worm. So he's gone. Excellent. Right, and that is it for her go. So spin that around. And there we are. That is the end of the hero phase. Let's get straight into the enemy phase. And here we are at the enemy phase. So let's get ourselves a response card. Low, low, low. Plus two. That's... Uh, well, it's, uh, it's low, but it's not going to do as much good. Because <laughs> we get a move and an attack. But, uh, yeah. yeah. So, first of all, we've got a move. So, this guy moves one. Then it's these guys. One, two, three. One, two, three. At least she's out of range. One, two, three. One, two, three. Obviously, this guy isn't going to move because it's in line of sight to Bastion. Let's get rid of that, just in case we get our old friend plus three shuffle. And... Then it's an attack. She is out of range, so none of these are going to attack. So it's just this guy attacking Bastion. He has an attack of three. Bastion has a defense of four. Are we going to aid Bastion? Yes, we. I rather think we are. And Simmer is going to come to the party again and play Enlightenment. Or is he? Or is he? No, he's not actually. No, he's not. We want. I want to keep that for actually doing hits. Yeah, I'm sick of spending all these cards on just defending. So it's just four minus three. So whatever this is. So we we need a, a plus one or lower. We got a plus three, so it has hit. So Bastion goes down to five hit points, and Bastion gets one of these, a wound card. And we will put that on top of his deck. Okay, so that is it. Bastion has been hit, but that's what he's there for. He's a meat shield baby. So Bastion has been hit. What is next? That is it, isn't it? For the enemy phase. Okay. Let's get into the next turn and the hero phase. And here we are at the hero phase. So let's spin all these around. Like so. And who is going to go first? Well, Elisa is going to go first. So she's got four action points and she's going to spend one, two, three of them to go on to charge. Now she's on charge, she's got an opportunity to move. So she can move back one, I think. So, in fact, no, we're not gonna put her on charge. We're gonna put her on sprint, is what we're gonna put her on. And so that is, she's got three left. That will get her one, two, three. And then we get a response card, which is minus one. <laughs> Damn it. So, oh, she's back to two. Oh, that is horrendous. Because where is it? Well, we, right, we're just going to have to move about one. So we're going to have to move about one and that's going to be it. That was unlucky. Um, I did want to get her here, but there, you, there we go. That one didn't work out. So that is it for her. Who is going to go next? And here we are back at the hero phase. Sorry about that. Been a slight delay. Got called away. So Elisa has gone. Yeah, that's it. She pulled a rubbish response card, didn't she? Who is going to go next? Well, I think next we are going to have Simmer. Simmer is going to go next. So skip this tab and go onto the attack tab. 
Now, he's not going to actually attack anybody. He just wants an extra card because he's aiding our friend Bastion here. So, Heavenly Blessing, that's a good card for three. That'll be cool. So, that is it for his go. Who is going to be next? And next up, I think we will have a Lathabelle. A Lathabelle is going to spend two action points to get on the Sprint tab. That leaves her two left. She's got to pick a response card. That's a plus four. Glad we got it and that the enemy didn't. And just going to move one. So just moving in here, trying to get everybody in to be able to aid Bastion. So that is it for a Lathabal. And that leaves Bastion. Here we are with Bastion. Bastion is going to attack. So one, two to go on to Bash, which leaves him now with three action points. So he's got three action points. He's got an attack of four. He's still got an attack of four. And it's four against three, plus he gets a response card. Are we going to play anything to help him? We are. We're going to play Enlightenment for two. So it is now six against three, and it's a response card battle. So Bastion is attacking, so he goes first. He gets plus three, brilliant. So it's now nine against three. So even if he gets plus five, he didn't. Woohoo! So that is another wound on the summoner. Fantastic. So discard enlightenment. And that is it for Bastion's go. That is it for the hero phase. So next up, it is the enemy phase. And here we are at the enemy phase. Okay. Oh, we need a lowish number. Plus two. That'll do. Um, oh, yeah, it's got a red eye on it. But um, I think I missed it a couple of episodes ago. Moving the Chileans into the proper spawn pools, you know, from the reserve. But I've done it now. But uh, we don't need to worry about that. But it did have a red eye on it. So plus two. That means we get a spawn, which we don't get because we haven't got any nests. And then we've got a move. So, no spawn, no nests, and a move. So, this guy moves here. One, two, three. This is why I wanted to move her back. One, two, three. One, two, three. The other bad thing is, like, he is not adjacent to these. So, I can't really use Fireball until they're bunched up. So, I might have killed... I think I might have killed that bone worm a little early. But, never mind, we shall have to sort something out. Right, that is it for the enemy phase. And that is it for this episode. So, the cultist guards are really closing in on Elisa. We're going to have to figure something out. We have got everybody set up here to kill this guy. We should be able to kill it next, next go. We've got Bastion on the job. We've got a couple of aid cards that we can use from... We've got Heavenly Blessing that Simmer can use to aid Bastion. So we should be able to kill it next turn. We've got to move Elisa back somehow. That bloody sprint card. Um, so we've got to move her back and she's going to have to start attacking this guy. Because uh, we've got to kill it quick. If we can kill this guy, these two are bunched up. So we can fireball those. So, but these guys, we've had them before. As soon as they start hitting you with fatigue, it's a real pain. So we're going to have to sort something out. But at least Simmer is ranged and Elisa is ranged. So if we can get Elisa back here, both Simmer and Elisa can attack at range. So that should help us out. Then we're going to have to sort of scoot Alathabal and Bastion around. But... We've got to kill that summoner first. Cool. Unfortunately, this guy's going to get away. Not much we can do about that, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, these are the problem. These are the problem now. He should go down next turn. So we'll have to sort something out here. 
Right, oh, so, thanks for watching. And thank you so much for all the subscriptions, for all the views, for all the likes, and for just generally being there. Thanks very much. And if you've noticed any errors, please let me know. Keep, keep them coming, and I will try and fix them. I don't think I've aided somebody off a rest boat this turn, but I may have done something else. So thank you for your vigilance. And thank you as well to everybody who's been across the board game links to upvote the site. And thank you to everybody on BGG who has commented on the videos, like the threads, and etc. So on and so forth. Thank you so much. Right, so that is it for episode 9 of Perdition's Mouth, Abyssal Rift. I hope you join me for episode 10. But until then, this is me, Cat Weasel, signing off. Toodaloo.